Hey guys, Larry here. So we did a Tasmania road trip and we spent two nights exploring Cradle Mountain. So I'll be going through where we stayed, the trekking routes that we went on, and also some other tips and tricks. So Crater Mountain is located on the northern end of Tasmania. So it's one of the most recognizable landmarks and is famous for its wilderness, lakes, and hiking routes. We started a trip from Hobart Central and hired a car. And I do recommend driving yourself instead of taking a day tour. To be prepared for the long drive, we got some specialty coffee and pastries from a cafe called District B. There are two routes that you could take from Hobart, one being more scenic and both taking four hours in total. We drove by the Great Lake and stopped at the lookout to stretch our legs and to see the lake from above. And we didn't last long as it became super windy. Pretty much up in the mountains, we're driving through pretty much the clouds where all the fog is. The temperature has significantly dropped so we got our coats on and now we're heading up to Cradle Mountain. About four-ish hours later we arrived at the visitor center so this is where you purchase your entry pass which includes the shuttle service. Prices do vary from what you're after and you can get a single day pass for $25 however we went for the holiday pass for two months which was 80 because we were going to go a couple times. As we were mapping our hiking routes it was getting late so it wasn't actually worth going into the national park and getting a shuttle bus. We were recommended to do a smaller walk and we drove to the Pepper's Cradle Mountain Lodge and parked our car and made our way to the Enchanted Stroll, which is graded as an easy walking track. Most of these routes are boarded and you get to walk through the lush rainforest with the mossy covered trees. In this area, you could sight platypus and wombats and we did see a wombat crossing the road and a couple of paddy melons. In this area, there aren't many eateries, but the popular place to dine is at the Peppers Tavern and Bistro. It's a nice cozy lodge with wood fire heaters and the interior reminds me of an alpine ski resort with all the heavy timber wood. And as you expect, it's pub food and we ordered the potato leek soup and the classic burger and fries. You can just rock up and when it's super busy, you have to wait for your food like we did 45 minutes later. I don't, I'm not sure which one. I think this is it. Yeah. For our accommodation, we stayed at a little quaint self-containing cabin on a private property called Wombat Cabin. It had everything you needed and the owners actually left us some goodies as I knew it was our birthdays, which is a so nice got touch. some white wine, so we got some truffle chocolates, also some cheeses. What about Wombat cabin and then put a little wombat. That's cute. The prerequisite that we had on this trip was to have a wooden cabin and also a nice fireplace. The other thing that attracted us to Wombat cabin was the evening feeding to the wildlife. So in this area, there are quite a lot of different Airbnbs in different price ranges that you can choose from. However, if you don't want to drive distance and you just want the ease, I would recommend staying at one of the lodges close by. Today is six degrees and yesterday was 16. As you can see, I got my whole gear on. Today was forecasted to be like a bit cloudy and rainy, but right now it's like blue sky and the sun just came out. So hopefully it'll be a good day. When you arrive at the bus stop, make sure to clean your shoes before and after. So the buses have different stops, which leads on to different trekking routes. We got off at the Ranger Station. This is where we started off our trip at the popular Cradle Mountain Boardwalk. While walking through the boardwalk, you get to see the beautiful landscape and vegetation. This section is our favorite, so if you see wombats like we did, make sure to take your time. So the wombats do jump on the boardwalk and there's a shitload, pun intended, of droppings all over the boardwalk. Unfortunately, we didn't see any up close, but we did see a couple close to their burrows. Our mission was to get to the Mirren's Lookout, which is a three hour return with our beautiful view from the top, with the route difficulty being the highest out of all the routes. From the boardwalk, we went on the overland track and then later on, we enter the Cradle Falls, which was like a wet rainforest. And you also see a waterfall as well. After this, we had a breather at the Crater Lake boat shed. Then we made our slow incline to the top of Crater Lake. We made it to Crater Lake. 
And now it just started getting windy and rainy and cold, but we've got to make it to the lookout. So when we got there, Marion's lookout was just in reach. So they had steps to get up there and also chains to pull yourself up. Unfortunately, we didn't actually make it up there as it started to pour down rain and I didn't want to risk my camera getting soaked or slipping from the wet rocks. And honestly, it's a shame we didn't make it to the top to see a beautiful view. Then we made our way back down and knowing our luck, the sun actually came out. So we headed down past Wombat Pools and around Lake Lila. We finally made it to the famous Dove Lake and the boat shed. So we took some photos and enjoyed the view and had our packed lunch in the shed. So after Dove Lake, we went to the bus stop and then headed back to our cabin. First thing that we did was lit the fireplace and had some cheese and crackers and opened our bottle of wine. It was much deserved after a big day of hiking. So it's six o'clock. We're about to walk down to the main house where all the animals are coming. And I think they're, they're coming right now. There's roughly 18 patty melons that I could count. So they were super cute, but they were very, very skittish. And honestly, I can't blame him because they were so tiny. Roots, carrots, pumpkin. Nice. And, um, so to feed them, we had fruit and pellets, and some would actually eat out of your hands. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> Caught red handed, buddy. As we were out in the bush, I thought I would actually try my luck getting some astro photography. Set up. On our last day, we got up bright and early with our drive watching the sunrise with a pinkish tone. It was so nice with the light hitting the trees. So this time we actually decided to drive into the national park and you're actually allowed to before 8 a.m. before the buses start running. Initially, we were going to do the Dove Lake circuit, but we were low on time and actually wanted to take it easy this time round. We drove in early this morning. So our mission today is to find some wombats. So we're doing an easy one hour trek. After that, we're heading to Dove Lake and hopefully we'll find some wombats. And here's a hot tip, make sure to place your national park registration on the dash as you will get a fine like we did. <laughs> but lucky us, they were able to cancel that ticket. If you do drive inside the national park and when you exit, you have to wait for a bus to pass and you'll tailgate them out. So there are a lot of one-way roads and the buses actually talk to each other with their walking talkies. If you're heading to Tasmania, I would definitely recommend Cradle Mountains and make sure you put it on your list. So we enjoyed our two nights and we honestly could stay another couple of nights to unwind and be in nature. So after Cradle Mountain, we visit the city of Launceston. So be sure to watch that video and I'll link it in the box below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.